In a previous video, I modeled a pipe wrench, and now I'm going to do a tool chest. So if you want to model along with me, you can grab the reference image from the link in the description, and we can do this. So here in Blender, I've just brought in the reference image, and I've moved it back a little bit, and we're going to get modeling right now. Let's see. Let's move this so that we are looking at the front view here. We'll give that a try there. All right, so looking from the front there, I'm going to bring in a plane, scale it up like this, and extrude up like this. And it doesn't really matter how high I go right now because I'm going to be making the top and the bottom out of this one piece. So with that done, I'm going to rotate X90 and slide this to the back so that we can get the approximate size of this in this orientation from the top like that rotate x90 I'm going to bring that down okay cool I think actually we'll work on the top first so I'm going to bring that to the top and bring that over here like that so we have the top piece, which we'll make the bottom out of as well. I'm going to delete this bottom face and look from the front again. And control R and click and control B and pull this to about the middle of those. Control R, control B, pull that to the middle of those. Okay, and then it's shift control or shift and alt and click is what I meant to say. And so I've got the edge loop selected all the way around. All right, cool. Control B now and pull. And just with the two segments, I'm going to do this. So now I have them there. And I'm going to E and Alt S and push. And I'm not looking at the diagram now. I'm just doing this by eye. After that's done, I want to come in here and delete these extra faces we don't need. Do that on the front and on the back. There we go. Now when we look at these, they don't come out straight. So with snapping set to edge, I'm going to select an edge selection number two, select the edges here on the front. And I'm going to pull them in and I'm going to hold control so they snap to the correct position. So pull them in and snap them to this top edge there. And let's do the same for these back ones. selected turn pull in and hold control over this edge here and you may get various edges just get the right one all right cool so that's going to represent the top or the bottom but we're just going to do one more thing here I'm going to shift alt and click these edges here am I, what am I going to do here And I'm going to press Control B and pull and bevel them like that. And I think we'll stop at that point for that. And we'll see how it turns out. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to round this off. So I'm going to select the edge here and here and here and here. We can look at the diagram if we want, or we can just bevel it any way we want. So it might be a little bit difficult. I'm going to pull to about there and then roll up one, two, three. So I have a total of five edges and I'll get some rounding like this. I'm also going to come around here and select all the way around. And I'm going to bevel control B and pull and I'll stick with the five segments and I'll have that 
All right, now we're gonna take this piece and we're gonna shift D to duplicate it. I'll pull down a little bit. I'm gonna rotate it to make the bottom RX 180. And I pull it down to here. And then in wireframe, I'm gonna box select here, get that top edge and pull it up. Maybe down a little bit. So there's a bit of a separation. Okay, very nice. Now let's put some thickness on this thing. So I'm going to, uh, I made Control L and select the whole bottom P to break it out so I can select the top and the bottom separately. Slash key to focus just on that. Let's put some thickness on this with Solidify. So add that. I'm gonna add the cavity shader so I can see what I'm doing a little bit. And start pulling that until you get the thickness that you like for this I'll put on even thickness and how about 0 0.018 for this okay so 0 0.018 let's bring back the other one and let's just control L copy modifiers and do it that way all right I'm going to apply the subdivision the uh, solidify there and I'm going to come in now and I'm going to shift alt and click the edges right there I'm going to zoom in a little bit and then I want to watch in particular over here control B pull and I'm just going to pull and have one segment in there just to slightly bevel that off I'm going to do the same thing on this one, slash key to focus just on that. I'm going to apply the solidify, come in and shift alt and click the edges, and control B and pull, just like that. Okay, I'm going to shade smooth now, and then add weighted normal, and normal's auto smooth. And this is what we're coming up with. And these may be a bit more exaggerated than in the in the reference image, and I actually would like that uh, even better. Shade smooth, weighted normal, and normal's auto smooth. I'll bring this up a little bit, just so we see a small gap in there. You can decide how close you want it. All right, so the next thing we'll do is we'll do the top. So I'm going to select here, this face, right in the middle there. And I'm going to bring my 3D cursor there. But I'm also going to shift D to duplicate and scale in to um, get that piece. And I think I'll just do this part by eye. You can see the approximate distance, you know, across. So something like this, and then scale in the Y and just make yourself a nice rectangle. We can adjust that uh, later on. We're gonna make that inset. So I'm gonna separate piece, separate by selection. Uh, that piece, I'm gonna pull it up and I'm gonna extrude it down. And let's take off the, this modifier here and this thing here and shade it flat. We're gonna use this to make a hole. Let's go in and in edge selection, select that edge, this edge, this edge, and this one and control B to bevel, pull, and I want five segments. Make it nice and round. Before we go any further, let's select everything and alt in, recalculate outside. Okay, let's take this piece now and in edit mode, let's just push it down in a little bit, like that, and then select the top piece and do Boolean, drag it up to the top with the pipette or eyedropper, select it and apply we have this so I've got a little bit of a hole in there I'm going to select all of this and I'm going to actually delete the vertices so I can select the edge all the way around and I'm going to press E to extrude and I'm going to pull down F to make face and now I'm going to select the edges and bevel control B and pull and I'm probably okay with just three segments. And then I'll take this here and I'll pull it up a little bit more. 
and we have our indent in there. We'll come back and we'll do the handle in a bit. Let's move on and have a look at the lock mechanism right in the center. Okay, so let's take this face, Shift D to duplicate, scale it in the X, and we'll go into wireframe and we'll look at this. I'm going to scale in the X a little bit more and P to break this piece out so I can just select this piece here. Back in edit mode and wireframe and I'm going to select just that top edge and pull it down. So I've got this. I think the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to do this as one piece. So I'm going to pull down to here and then I'm going to drop an edge loop right there in the middle. I'll take this edge again and I'm going to shift control B and pull and I'm going to want to have five or five uh, vertices in there. If I go into wireframe you can see I've got the five. Alright so I have that. Let's go into solid view. This is the piece I've got. I'm going to take that whole thing and I'm going to extrude back a little ways and I'll get rid of that back face. I'll turn that off for now. Okay, now I'm going to take this edge here and I'm going to simulate that it's cut in half by Control B and pull. Roll back so I just have the two edges. E and Alt S and let's see, pull, push. Just to pull them in. I don't think you're even going to see that piece. Let me turn off that for now and shade flat. I don't think you're going to see that, but uh, in case you ever did, uh, we'll have that. Okay, now let's come around and grab the edges here, the vertical edges there, and we'll bevel them just a little bit, and I'll put in probably five, and then shift alt and click, shift alt and click, and we'll also have to go in there, shift alt and click. Actually, before we do that, let's take these faces and get rid of those. Those are gone now. Shift Alt and click. All this stuff going all the way around. Just make sure we get in there as well. And we're there. And I'll just zoom in right here. Control B, pull. And you can have a you know, you can have three segments if you want. I'll, I may bring it up just to make it a little bit smoother. And I'll also do the same here, but I will only have three. Uh, just these outer edges here. Control B, pull, roll back to three segments. And we have our beginning of our lock mechanism there. All right, I'm gonna put a cylinder here. So let's go ahead and select this thing here and bring the 3D cursor there and Shift A, Mesh Cylinder. I'll use um, maybe 16 or 18, I'll try 16 vertices. It's pretty small. So we'll just bring it down in size. We'll rotate Y90 and position it over something like that see the way it's pretty much going to block that anyhow so whether or not you even needed it scale in the X and I'm just going to have it poke out a little bit on either side let's just see where it's positioned it's not bad actually do something like that and then um, I'm just going to give this a, few, a couple of segments control R there's one and uh, actually I'll just before I drop that in I'll just roll up like that I'll have three that's fine and I'll go back into solid view and I'll control B pull and I just want the space E and Alt S and pull and make it go down inside there in face selection grab that face and that face and control B and pull and have three segments we can shade smooth this and I'll add a bevel just like that and we'll put on weighted normal and auto smooth and that'll be fine. And later on, we'll just apply the bevel, and, and that'll be that'll be our hinge piece there. Okay, back into wireframe, and we're going to cut a hole in here, and we'll make this and this in the lock. All right, so we've got our 3D cursor there. And we are in object mode, right? Yes. So I'm going to bring in a plane, scale it down, rotate it in the X and get that approximate size it goes down just below that there and maybe around there and scale it in the x just to make a small hole all right i'm going to press one for vertex selection i want to round this shift control b pull you know you could probably use three but i'm going to end up using five 
just it's, it's a little rounder and I'm not worried about my polish. I'm just going to pull it out and go back in the solid view and I'm going to extrude it back and then I'm going to recalculate outside. I just want to use this to make a, an indentation. So I'm going to focus on those two things. Let's select that and that slash key. I just want to have a look at this as I do this. So I'm going to take this piece here and I'm going to add a boolean. I see that that wasn't on. It doesn't really matter. Pull that to the top and I'm going to select and apply and get rid of that. I've got a little hole and I just want to give it a little bit of depth. So I'm going to shift alt and click those edges and E to extrude and pull it in and then grab the edges again and we'll bevel this with three just like that I can shade smooth and we've got that on let's make sure we've got auto smooth as well so we have our hole okay cool let's look from the front and wireframe so now we're going to do this piece here so let's um, actually let's that's already selected and if it's not just shift alt and click just go around this one it's very central so bring the 3d cursor there and now we're going to bring in a circle and I'm going to go for maybe 20 vertices. Scale it down. I'm going to rotate Y90 like that. And pull it out. Look from the side, number three, one for vertex selection and box select these bottom vertices there. So I've, I've left these sort of horizontal ones. E to extrude, pull it back. And uh, we'll select it all on F to make a face. And that's going to get pushed in in a second, but first we'll give it some thickness. I'm just going to slide it over a bit to there. E to extrude, pull it out, and I'll just center it a little bit better, like that. Okay. I'm going to select this back face and delete it, and then select these edges. And we're going to bevel them. Control B, pull. All right, so I'm going to punch a hole in this now. Uh, I'll worry about shading it a bit. So I'm going to select here and select here and shift S cursor to selected and I'm going to bring in a cylinder and I'll make this you know like 32 just a nice round hole or a smooth hole I'm going to rotate Y90 and scale in the axis to make sure it goes through and then just look at the position that I want this and the size so a nice big hole and I'm just looking here that it's going to go through properly Something like that is probably just fine. So select here, Boolean, and select the cylinder. Apply, we get rid of the cylinder. And now I'll fix this up by coming in and selecting the edges. And Control B to bevel, pull. I'm going to add one or two more segments to it though. Like that. We'll shade smooth. And then we'll come over here and make sure we've got weighted normal and normals auto smooth on there and there's our piece there I'm going to select again everything and alt and recalculate outside I might want to once in a while merge by distance see if I've got anything else okay uh, let's have a look at the reference and just see what's going on here so we got that and that sticks out maybe a little bit more so let's just take this and pull it out a little bit more Okay, like that. All right, so now I want to select something like that and bring my 3D cursor there so I can bring in a torus. All right, so I've got my torus there. I'll zoom out. You can start playing. Hold down Shift. Go down as many segments as you want. Maybe I'll go for 20. And this, mm, I'll leave it at about 10. Okay, go into edit mode, scale it down. I'm going to rotate X90 and position this in the middle. About there, look from the front and um, I'm going to box select all of these and delete those. All right, shift alt and click here, shift alt and click here, E to extrude and pull down like that. And that part's going to go into the lock. All right, we can shade smooth that. All right, those are still selected, so that's a nice place to bring in my lock. And to make the lock, I'm going to use a circle. 
with six vertices. So it's kind of like you're making a hexagonal bolt. I'm going to scale this in the Y to flatten it. And we'll bring it in. I'll go F to make a face. And then we'll look at the, the diagram here. I'm going to scale it down. I'm going to extrude it down like this. And let's look at it and see if it's starting to look like a lock. Yeah, that looks like a lock. All right, let's pull it back until it's pretty much in the middle. Have a look at that. Not too bad. Size is pretty much almost the same. Pull it up a little bit if we wanted to. Okay, so now we'll uh, we'll bevel these edges a little bit. So shift alt and click these edges here. And give them a little bit of a bevel with maybe three. And this one and the back one, so I may have to just focus on the lock. I want the front and the back. And I'm going to bevel that but I, with about three. But I'm just gonna, actually, I might use five, but just pull it out a little bit more, something like that. So it's not as sharp. And then uh, just grab the top, even face selection, that'll work. And Control-B, pull, you can have three again, just to round it out. Shade smooth, weighted normal, and auto smooth. And I think I want it a little thicker, actually. So I'm going to scale it in the Y and give it a little bit more depth. I've got even more room to do that in behind. So I get that. To put the feet on, I'm going to look from the bottom and come in here and select maybe that point there. Shift S, cursor to selected. So we're in the vicinity, and I'm going to bring in a cylinder. And I'm going to use, say, 16 vertices. I'll scale it down move it in and I'm not going to really use the diagram to do this I'm just going to do something that I like so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to select the top face and delete it select the bottom face and I'm going to press S to scale it in and then I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to pull that in and then I'm going to select the top face again and I'm going to bevel it just with three and shade smooth you'll barely see these if at all so I've got that. I'm just going to recalculate outside in case I need to. And then I'm going to select something that's central, like just the, that square there. Bring the 3D cursor there. Take this. Set the origin to the 3D cursor. And then I'm going to mirror this in the X and in the Y. And if I like that, I'm just going to go ahead and apply that. Good. Let's make a little adjustment here. Switch this to both. Pull these values up make it a little bit more interesting to look at all right so far so good okay so let's let's do the handle now and the handle has these things here so i'll show you how to how you can make those so let's come up here to our indent and just before we make it let's have a look at this and decide maybe we don't want it that far in all right let's select that and shift s cursor to select it and we'll go ahead and make this. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to bring in a cube. I'm going to scale it down. We can move it over to the side if we want to. I'm going to go Control-3 on that. Shade Smooth. And we're going to apply that. You could use 2 if you preferred. I'm going to look from the front in Wireframe. And Vertex Selection and Box Select. And get rid of the bottom section of this. And then I'm going to get rid of the front half of it I guess so I've got just this shift alt and click here and extrude out and I can take this whole thing and move it over we'll our and scale it down so I'm going to take this again and I'm going to move it out so it's roughly following the diagram and this is what I have right here okay I'm going to select um, here let's let's just focus on that I'm going to select these bottom vertices here. Shift S cursor to select it. Bring my 3D cursor there. Come on, there. And switch over to 3D cursor. So my pivot point is there. I'm Shift Alt and click that whole ring going around it. I'm going to press E and S. And just splay it out in some way that I think that I, that I like. You know, distance. I'll, I want to put a bolt. And then I'm going to scale in the X and pull back in so that you know and it's all coming around that pivot point so it's roughly equal something like that is probably fine 
I'm going to take this whole thing and alt n recalculate outside in case I need to do that. I'm going to give this some thickness by E and alt s and I'm going to pull and give that some thickness like that. And I'm not going to delete the faces because I pretty much need them. So I'm going to select this edge and this edge and I'm going to control B to bevel like that and then I'm going to go all the way around. So I get the whole top and I'm going to control B to bevel and I'll just use three and then I'm going to do the bottom as well because this edge is visible here. Okay, all the way around and control B and pull and that's probably okay. You could consider beveling, you know, this if you really wanted to. We could try it and see, it's, you know, it just becomes more polys, but you know, looks all right, I guess. So slash key to bring that back and we have that. So let's look on the diagram, see where we're at. I think we're, we're good. So let's just land this thing on the ground. Whoops, uh, we'll select it all and just pull it down. And we may be off the diagram a little bit, or we may not be at, you know, very much, just because of the, 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 the depth of this. Um, with that done though, I'm going to uh, select this thing again, bring the 3D cursor there, take this and make sure the origin is the 3D cursor. Actually it is, but let's just go back to median point and just mirror that across to the other side. So we can put some bolts on that for sure. Okay, let's make the handle now with the 3D cursor right in the middle. I'm going to bring in a plane, rotate X90. I'm going to scale this in the X until we're inside there. In fact, we could make it on top of this, couldn't we? We might want to do that. All right, why not? Okay, let's grab these bottom ones and pull them up to about that height. And let's X edges, so I have this. Take these E and SX and pull them in like that. Now we can take these ones and we can SX, just position them the way we like. I'm going to take these vertices right here and I'm going to bevel them. Shift Control B, pull, and I think I'll put five on there. Do something like that. Right click and convert to curve in the curve dialog box under bevel depth pull down shift and pull until you get the approximate thickness that you want for that handle all right okay let's bring this guy back down here and see how it fits let's um, do this set the origin to the geometry and we'll get that right in there we can shade smooths to have a look at it yeah we can do that all right, well, let's convert that to a mesh now. Change the resolution to four. Right click, convert to mesh. And then come in here and shift alt and click this. E and alt S. Pull it out nicely. And then in edge selection, shift alt and click the edges here and control B and bevel. We just need three like that. Let's have a look at this. And you can see what I've got here. Let's. Put an edge loop there and S to scale. Just come out like that. And we've got our thing. I may put an edge loop in here and another one in here. There we go. I'm going to take the whole thing though, just recalculate outside just to be sure. And let's have a look and see if anybody's flipped. Ah, see? They'll, those guys, all 10, recalculate outside. And this and this, we calculate outside. I was doing so well checking that stuff before. All right, so we got the handle. So the final thing is bolts or screws, and I will probably do that in texturing. Um, but to simulate them for now, you know, we'll do some we'll do some of that stuff. So I'm going to come back to here and just select something kind of central like that piece there, bring that 3D cursor there, so we're in the vicinity, and I'll bring in a circle that's just 16. You could do it less even if you're just simulating, but I want it to look kind of all right. So I'm gonna take that F to make face, rotate X 90, scale it down, I'll look in wireframe, 
and I'll just make some stuff. I mean, you could leave that and have that as your actual geometry. That'll be fine. So something like that. Where are you? All right, pull you out. Okay, bring that back. Uh, not that. <laughs> Delete that back face, and then select there, and Control B and bevel. I'll have three. I'll have one more. All right, I'll take that and I'll push it in. I will recalculate outside and shade smooth. And we'll have that there. Okay, my 3D cursor is right there. Actually, let me double check that that's, yeah, okay. Let's take that and mirror it, just like that. I'll go into wireframe and then I'm just going to Shift D to duplicate, pull them down. Shift D, pull them down to there. And Shift D, pull them down here. Okay, now these could, like I say, work as in geometry because they could be like um, rivets, if that's what they're called. I'm just looking to make sure that that's pressed in. Okay, and then uh, I can do just other ones here because the only other ones that I had were on here. And so what I'll do is I'll come in here and I will select something. Let's look down from the top. Where are you? Um, Okay, so what's central? I guess this edge here, I think. And it doesn't have to be perfect anyhow. Uh, I'm going to bring in another circle of 16. And we'll, we'll do something. They are pretty small, so it may be a little hard to see. But, you know, whether or not it's worth uh, doing something like that. I don't know. I think so. Always worth doing. Let's pull that in. And it, I just want it as big as I can get it, really. So I have that there. I'm going to just Shift D and G, drag something over there, Shift D and G, and drag something over there. It does not have to be in line. So I've got those. And then I'll select this. Um, what will I select? I'll select this and bring my 3D cursor central to there. Then I'll take that and set the origin to the 3D cursor, and I'll mirror those. To the other side now i haven't been applying modifier modifiers and i haven't been joining things we'll think about that later i want to have a look at this all right and i want to add a weighted normal or is that just a shadow no no that did help okay so that is it for the simple case except for any text and i'm not certain that i would do it this way either but we'll do it we'll add that just for the last touch so I'm gonna bring in text we'll look down from the top in my text here I'm going to change the alignment to center and I'm just gonna scale it down a bit and I'm going to search for a font and the font that I used that, that I have was magneto Magneto bold. All right, and I did something like Smith and Son. Let's scale it. All right, so you have that. And then I'm going to come over here to extrude and just pull it up a little bit up to you how much you want to do and a little bit of beveling like that and I've got some text on there all right let's rotate the handle down now let's select here or select something central like uh, this thing here probably good enough and then we'll set the 3d cursor to that and I'm gonna look from the side and I'm just gonna press R to rotate and bring it down I'll just position it though now I'm gonna go RX to rotate it is in the X and just till it starts to touch and I'll come out of that all right so let's actually double check this good Could try a different mat cap and see what it looks like. 
All right, so there's our very simple tool chest. And in the next uh, video or two, I will get into texturing the wrench and the tool case and see if I want to do a couple of other pieces uh, along with that for my scene for the Blender Challenge. Okay, cool. Thanks for watching.